Now our application is complete and we want to deploy our application to Azure. But before we do that, we need to think about how the very first admin user will be created in the production database. On top of that, how will roles of the website be created? What we did previously is we have a manual hack inside the register. If I go register.cs, right here we were checking if the role did not exist, then we were creating it. But when we deploy the application, we do not want a hacky way, we want the correct way. To do things in a correct way, we have to create something called a DB initializer and with migration, we want to create an admin account as well as roles in our website. Now the question is where do we add that DB initializer? We will do that in the data access folder. I will create a new folder. Let me stop the application first. And that will be DB initializer. Inside there, I will create a class file with the name of DB initializer. And I will create an interface. Show all templates here. And that will be IDB initializer. That will be a public interface. And inside there, I will add one method, which is void initialize. That method will be responsible for creating admin user and the rules of our website. So let me implement that right here. IDB initializer, implement interface, and make that public. Now let me implement this in the next video. Now we want to implement the initialize method in the DB initializer and there I want to do three things. First I want to push migrations if they are not applied. Next create roles if they are not created. Third if the roles are not created then we will create admin user as well. So basically we will create roles and admin user along with pushing all the pending migration. Now when we are working with creating user or assigning roles, we have always used user manager, role manager and application db context. So let me inject all three of them using dependency injection. Once we do that, then first we want to apply any pending migration. That we can do inside a try catch block here and exception e perfect here we will have an if condition and on underscore db we have database where we have a helper function which is get pending migrations and we will check if the count of pending migration is greater than zero if that is then we will apply the migration by using underscore db dot database dot migrate Next, we need to create roles if they are not created. We have that inside register. We can cut that and paste it right here. That looks good. And after that, we have to create an application user. So user manager dot create async. We will create a new application user and populate some of the details. With a comma here, we have to add the password. So that is what we will add right here. You can see we need identity user, comma the password. Because it is an async here, we will have to call the get awaiter dot get result. Once the user is created, we will retrieve that user object from database using underscore db dot application user. And after that is done, we will call user manager dot add to role async we will pass the user and the role is sd dot role admin we will call the get awaiter dot get result now this user that we want to create will only happen the first time if the role does not exist so we can add that inside the same if condition and after everything we will directly return back to the application 
and that looks good so perfect you can see how we are seeding our data with the initialize method but now the question is how will this initialize method or where will we invoke this initialize method we have to get creative to invoke that inside program.cs let me open that and we will add that to our pipeline right after app.run let me create a method here with the name of C database and there using app.service we will have to create a scope so I will add a using statement here I will say variable scope is equal to app.services dot create scope on this scope object we can get the service provider so on scope we have the service provider there we have a method get required service and the type of service implementation that we want is idb initializer we will store that inside a variable db initializer here and then on db initializer we can invoke that initialize method now the seed database let me invoke that in our pipeline so right here we can invoke that so that will be invoked every time the application is restarted but if we examine the code here we are checking the role if that already exists it will not execute any of the statement it will only execute the statements first time when it is creating role and that is exactly what we want but anytime if there are pending migrations they will be applied automatically but one thing is remaining in program.cs we are telling the service provider to get an implementation of idb initializer but have we registered that in builder.services we have not so let me add that by builder.services.addscoped idb initializer and the implementation is inside db initializer now with all of that configured let me show you how to test this in the next video now how can we test if everything is actually working well doing that doing that is super simple let me close all the tabs here and open app settings.json we have been using bulky database but now let me change the database name to bulky one typically when we do that we have to add migration but now we are doing that in seed database so we do not have to do anything here directly run the application it will automatically create that database apply all the migration seed admin user and assign the role of admin perfect you can see here all the products are created now we do not have any image because that is the edit that user will have to do let me go to db initializer that was admin at dot net mastery dot com and if i try admin one two three it should be able to sign me in and perfect everything is working as expected so that means if we go back here we should have bulky one and it should have all the tables everything is created so you can see with db initializer how easy deployment will be now before we do anything else here let me revert back the old database name because that has orders and everything and that is what we will use if we want to build on to our application i can also go back and delete this bulky one that was only for testing perfect let me continue from the next video in the upcoming videos we will see how to send email using sendgrid and these two videos are optional videos and the reason i am saying that is because when we want to use sendgrid to send out emails you need a domain email when you are working professionally you will always have a domain email from your workplace but if you are learning something 
it might be possible that you do not have a domain email. If you do not have a domain email, SendGrid email will not work. And that is actually true for other email providers as well. They prefer you have a domain email. So if you do not have a domain email, you can just watch the video and see how easy it is to implement the email functionality. That being said, we will be using SendGrid to send emails in our project. First, let me sign in here because I already have an account. If you do not have an account, you can always sign up for a free account. Once you log in there, on the profile, we have something called as account settings. Inside there, before we do anything else, there is something called as sender authentication. There you have to basically verify your domain name. I have already verified hello at .netmastery.com. Because of that, I am able to use SendGrid. Now, if you are creating your account, you will have to verify a single sender identity. You will enter the details here and it will guide you on how to verify that identity. If that identity is not verified using a domain email, then SendGrid will not work. So again, if you do not have a domain email and you only have Gmail or Yahoo, do not try SendGrid, it will not work. But you can watch the video and see how easy it is to implement email in .NET Core. Now similar to Stripe, with SendGrid as well, we need an API key. So let me create a new API key here with full access. Key name, let me call that as bulky, create and view, and perfect, let me copy that. We will paste our keys in the same location, which is app settings.json here, and right here. We will add a section of send grid, and in there we will use a key name of secret key, and let me paste the secret right here. Now if you remember, previously we saw some issue while sending emails. Because of that in the utility project, we implemented the email sender, which basically implements the built-in iEmail sender. We will enhance this email sender and add SendGrid support right here. So first thing, inside the utility project, manage NuGet packages, and there we will browse for the SendGrid package. Perfect, we have the package here. Let me install that. And then we are ready to use SendGrid inside the email sender. Now using SendGrid here is super simple. First, we need to access our key here. So let me create a property to store that key. And in the constructor here, previously we saw that with Stripe, we created a class that resembles the property and we used to populate that in program.cs. Another way of accessing them is we can access the I configuration directly here. Call that underscore config. Then to populate the SendGrid secret here, we will access underscore config. There we have a method get value where we have to define the type. And here we need to write the key name. Now in app settings, we have section of send grid. Copy and paste that. We have a key with the name of secret key. So we will separate that by colon and paste that secret key. That will retrieve the secret value and assign that to send grid secret. Finally, right here, we have to add the logic to send an email. When we are working with SendGrid, we first have to create a client, which is inside SendGrid client. And inside the parameter here, we have to pass the SendGrid secret key. That way it will create a client. Then we need to add the from email address. So we will say variable from is equal to new email address. And that email address, you can see it is inside sendgrid.helpers.mail and there we will write the email 
which I have used to verify the single sender identity, which is hello at dotnetmastery.com. Next, we can give a title here like bulky book. And that looks good for the email. Then what email do we want to send email to? So two will be new email address and that we receive in the parameter of the method right here. Finally, we have the message itself. Message is equal to mail helper dot. There is a method create single email. Now previously in older version of SendGrid it was different, but they have simplified it with create single email. If you have a template, you can use create single template email. We have a single email, we can add that and we have simple parameter. From email, we have that in from. To email is inside to. Subject, we receive that in the parameter. And then we can give plain text content or string HTML. Plain text content, let me keep that empty. But finally, we have some HTML content that we will receive in the parameter, which is HTML message. So with that, we have drafted the message that we need to send. Finally, on client, we will call the send email async and we will pass our message and that will finally send the email. So you can see how easy it was to implement the I email sender. It was adding about five lines of code and that's about it. That is how easy SendGrid implementation is when it comes to .NET Core. Let me test that in the next video. How will we be able to test this email functionality? Let me first go to program.cs and make sure that I have injected email sender correctly. That looks good. And because of that, if I examine the register here, let me open the page model. And if you examine, we have the I email sender independency injection. Also, when the registration is successful here, it is automatically sending an email to confirm the account. So that logic is already there. Let me run the application and register to see if that is working. Previously, the logic was there, but the email sender was empty because of which no email was being sent. But now that we have added the logic, it should send out an email. Let me let me register. The email address is valid here. So let me hit the register button. Perfect, that is done. Let me open Gmail here. And then of course, we will have to look into the spam folder. And we have this email from bulky book. It should be bulky. I believe I have a spelling mistake in email sender. There we go. So whatever name we have here, it is using that right here and it is displaying. Please confirm your account by clicking here. Now surprisingly, when we will click there, it takes us to the confirmation page and it displays. Thank you for confirming your email. Now all of this logic is already built in with the .NET identity because of which you can see in the database when we examine the ASP.NET users table, let me open that. You will see email confirmed will be true for this account. Where is that right here? You can see email confirmed is true. So that implementation is also working as expected. On top of that, if you want to send an email, once the order is placed, we can do that as well. It is straightforward. We have that in the cart controller. Let me open that. And there we will have to inject the I email sender using dependency injection. Let me do that here. And perfect. Then the action method will be order confirmation. And right here, we can use underscore email sender. There we have the method send email async. We need to provide email, subject and HTML message. 
email is inside order header dot application user dot email next we need a subject so we can say new order bulky book and finally we need some text here so this will be html so we can add a paragraph tag with the closing tag and we can say new order created and with that we will append the order id that is inside order header dot id perfect that looks good with that configured let me restart the application and try to place an order we are already logged in let me add item to the cart go to cart here summary place order perfect let me hit the pay button here and that works order number is 1010 and then if you open gmail you will notice the email new order bulky book and new order along with the order id now you can be fancy with the html templates here but i am keeping things super simple so perfect with that email functionality is looking good in our project now email functionality and everything is looking good in our project it's time to finally deploy the application to azure one thing that i can change here is the logo so let me switch back to the project here and if you examine i think we already copied the image here in images we have book.png let me add that in underscore layout in views shared underscore layout if we scroll down where we have the bulky book web right here let me replace that with the image tag and i will say img src images book.png and let me see the ui that looks much better for my project now with that change I want to deploy this to Azure. Now when we have to deploy things to Azure, make sure that you have an active Azure subscription. You can sign up for a free account and get about $200 in free credit. I already have an account, so I will directly use that. I will open a new browser and I will write portal.azure.com. There I will navigate to my Azure account and I have an active subscription along with other services. First, we need to create a SQL database. And for SQL database, we will have to create a SQL server. But let me create a SQL database. If you do not have that, you can always search here for SQL and you will see SQL database. Once you go in there, you will hit the create button. You will have to select your subscription there, scroll down, and a resource group. I will create a new resource group here, which will be .NET Mastery Live Project. After that, we need to give our database a meaningful name. We can call that Bulky, and we have to create a server. We need to create a new server. So let me give that a unique name of bulky. So bulky.database.windows.net. Inside there, we will be using SQL authentication. So the user ID will be SQL admin. And password, I will use admin123 star for now. Now, obviously, in the future, I will change things around here. But this is for testing. So that looks good. Perfect, so we are creating a server, a database here, and we do not want to use Elastic Pool. The workload environment, we will keep that as development because production can be quite expensive and right now we are learning things. We will configure the database here and the service tier, I am going to use the cheapest one which is basic, which is about $5 per month that is sufficient for my testing and that looks good with that we have the total monthly cost here we will hit review plus create and looks good 
let me create the SQL database and the SQL server. The deployment will take a while, so let me wait for that. And perfect, the deployment is complete here. If I go to resource, well, we have the SQL database. Let me go to the overview tab. And first thing, we have to add the server firewall. If you do not add that, you will not be able to access the SQL server from your IP address. So make sure to add your firewall here. We will say selected network and we will add your client IPv4 address. And before you hit the save button, make sure and make sure once again to allow Azure services and resources to access this server. Because what will happen is when we deploy web application, that web application has to access this server. If you do not allow that, then it will not be able to access your database. So with both of them, hit the save button. We get an error here, so we will have to retry that. Let me go back to bulky here, set server firewall, and we will save this. Perfect, that worked. Now let me add the IP address. Perfect, individually, both of them works. Now right here, if we examine the connection string inside SQL database, we have the connection string to connect to our SQL server. So we need to use this connection string when we are deploying. How will we deploy our code to Azure? We will stop the service here. And what we have to do is let me collapse everything here. Right click on the solution. Let me close all the tabs here. And let me deploy the web project in the next video. Now we need to deploy the web application to Azure. Right now, .NET 8 is in preview, so rather than facing some issues with the preview version, we can convert or downgrade our application to .NET 7 only to learn how the hosting works and see that in action. So we will edit the project file here. Let me open that and it will be .NET 7. The version I know is 7.0.3. So I will replace that in all of them right here. And perfect. I believe that looks good for the web project. Save that. Let me update the utility this time. Net 7 and 7.0.3. Check the other one, net 7, 7.0.3, edit project file. Now the only packages that we will update where you see preview and not any other package like Stripe or SendGrid. We only want to touch the Microsoft packages and perfect, that looks good. With that, let me run the application and everything should work as it is. Let me see which one is the issue. I believe I forgot something in the web project. Edit project file, whoops, 7.0.3. And that looks good. Let me run this. We are facing one issue here because date only has been introduced with .NET 8 and it is not available with .NET 7. So that will be a little bit of an issue for our deployment. To modify that, we will have to change quite a few things. First in the data here, well, we have to go to models where we have order header, change it from date only to date time. And now if I build the application, it looks like it is working here. Let me run this. We were converting that and that should not work. Right here. It will be daytime.now.add30days. And with that change, let me run the application and see if that works. Let me try to place an order as a company user.
we have few things in the cart that should be okay let me add one more here navigate to the cart and place order perfect order number is 2010 let me log out and log in as an admin let me manage that order which is 2010 here start processing add the carrier and tracking and ship order perfect we have the payment due date and that is working as expected so with that everything is looking good on localhost and the project is downgraded to dotnet 7. let me close all the tabs here i will commit that with dotnet 7 downgrade and perfect that worked so our code is all checked in and in the next video let's work on deploying that to an app service now we have created the sql database and sql server in the azure portal we need to deploy the app service and that could be done directly from visual studio if we right click here we have the publish icon but if you want to deploy that from the azure portal that is also possible and let me show you that route in the app service here we will hit the create and there we have to select subscription resource group we will select the same dotnet mastery live project and the name here bulky mvc hyphen dotnet mastery name that we are using here will be the web name so let me copy that it will be dot azure websites dot net it will be a code based application so we will select that and what is the runtime stack that is dotnet 7. we need to select the region here operating system windows looks good and for the plan here we want a free plan so let me select that with that let me hit the next button for deployment and if you want we can enable the ci cd pipeline so if you enable that it will automatically deploy changes to the website as soon as you make a change right here my github account is already connected here i will select organization and repository is bulky underscore mvc that is the repository name that i have so perfect looks good networking tab we will enable the public access and you can always enable application insights for logging if you want but right now everything looks good here let me hit the create button perfect the deployment is complete here let me go to the resource now if we click on the domain here it will not work and let me show that so basically our web app is running but the code is not deployed and if you go back here you will notice in the deployment center it is in process so let me refresh and wait for this to be complete and perfect you can see the deployment is successful here if i go to app service and run it will not work and the reason behind that is inside app settings we are looking for a local database but we do not have the connection string to point to the new database that we added perfect you can see the generic error asp.net core app failed to start so how do we fix that well we first have to provide connection string here and ideal way of doing that is let me go to database bulky and where we have connection string let me copy this go back to our project here and where we have the app settings we have the development.json so typically for production we will be adding a new file in the web project and we will search for app settings name that we will give here is app settings dot production dot json add that file you can see it automatically maps right here 
there let me copy whatever we have inside app settings.json and we will paste it in the production file right here now what we want is we want a different connection for production so we can copy this i will paste it right here and where we have the password i will type in my password admin123 star perfect so with that it will be able to connect to production and all we have to do here is push the change i will have the lecture name azure production deployment commit that and push the change now because ci cd is enabled here let me do pull and push here and perfect now because ci cd is enabled here if we go to our app service which is bulky mvc here you will notice a new deployment will be triggered automatically let me go there and perfect you can see because of ci cd it automatically starts the deployment process because it triggers that hey there was something new that was pushed to the git repo so let me wait for this deployment as well now while this is being deployed one thing that you must must remember in the app server if you go to networking tab i believe there is a field allow azure services and resources to access this server make sure and again make sure that this is checked if this is not saved then you will still see the error message that we saw right here so that is connected here let me go to app service and wait for the deployment perfect let me refresh here and perfect you can see the deployment is successful now if we go back and refresh i believe everything should work now it might take some time to load it for the first time so let me wait for that and perfect you can see our website is up and running and that is the power of app settings.json file because of production it is able to detect that but on top of that what we can do is when we go to configuration right now we did not have any asp.net core environment but we can explicitly set the environment and that variable name is asp.net core underscore environment and that will be production you save that and make sure to save it here that way it will restart the app and it will use that connection but if you notice here our web application is already running because it will look for non-dev here and we have production it will get the connection string from there but we have to make couple of more fixes let me do that in the next video now on the production website we can log in using the user that we seeded in db initializer so let me hit the login button and i will log in as admin at .netmastery.com. once we do that then we can modify the product if we want and we can add image there so cotton candy let me upload image update let me do that for all of them perfect now if i go to the home page great all the images are coming up here and let me try to place an order as an admin user something will not work and let me show that when we go to summary place order it will redirect me to stripe that is okay but if i click the back button here it will not work because we have the url that was hard coded to localhost and that should not be the case so we basically have to get this url more dynamically let me switch back to the code here and let me do ctrl shift f and search for localhost 
I have that in two places. Let me open both of them. So first we need to get this HTTPS and that we can get from request.scheme. That will provide us whether it's HTTP, HTTPS. After that we will have to add this colon and two forward slash and the later part here we can get that using request.host.value. Finally, we will have to add the forward slash at the end. So this will get the domain dynamically. If it's localhost, it will get that. If it is a website, it will get that. In the controller here, let me add that as well. And with that change, we will have to commit and deploy. So here, I will name the git commit as post deployment URL settings and let me push that. Perfect, that looks good. Now when it will be pushed, that will trigger one more deployment. I already saw that on the home page. Perfect, we will have to wait again to see all the changes in action. Perfect, the deployment complete. Now if we open the domain again, this time we should be able to place order and Stripe should be able to redirect us based on the dynamic URL. We are logged in. Let me go to cart here. Place order. We navigate to the shopping cart. If we select back here, it takes us to the correct shopping cart. So that is working. And let me try to place an order with the dummy credit card. Perfect, that worked. If we go to order management, great. We have three orders in the all, but you can see some of them are pending because we went to the checkout page and then we came back. So what you can do is on validations, you can add a custom status that hey, it went to cart, but the order did not go through and maybe have a cleanup job to remove those orders. So that is something that you can work with and modify based on your requirements. But we have a successful order here and payment status is approved. The order status is also approved. We can start processing, ship the order and perfect. All the validations are working as expected.